Whenever I go to the movies, I like to keep my expectations low. And more often than not, this results in a pleasant surprise. And Elemental is one of those times. Look, I had a lot of concerns about this movie, which I detailed in previous videos. And while they were valid, and it turns out warranted, this movie was nowhere near as bad as I feared. Is this a masterpiece that you're gonna remember forever? No, but it was a sweet and enjoyable movie with just a few drawbacks. It starts really slow, but it ends well. I'm gonna have to give you some spoilers to explain why. Now let's talk about that plot. The movie opens up by showing that the fire people are the final immigrants to Element City, which was founded by water people. Main character Ember's parents are the first to arrive and they're searching for a place to stay, but they're turned away by everybody, very Joseph and Mary. They end up on the outskirts of town in a rundown building, and eventually they build a fire ghetto. The fire people are every type of immigrant. They did a really cool job of blending all kinds of foreign culture. The parents sometimes sound Jewish and they talk about the old country. Sometimes they sound Eastern European. They speak a language called Fireish. There are hints of Indian, Asian, and Middle Eastern in their music and dress and architecture. The other elements all commingle in the city and the fire people live alone on the other side of the river. We see that Ember is destined to take over her father's store and she really wants his approval to do so, but she can't control her temper. One day she goes down to the basement to throw a little tantrum for a minute, settle it off some steam, and her eruption damages the water pipes, multiple water pipes that are running through this basement for some reason, and the water leak also pulls Wade through a grate somewhere, and he lands in the basement with her. He is a city inspector, and he starts writing a bunch of citations immediately for some reason, and then he gets spooked and sprints away from her to the city and turns them all in right away. Ember's upset because her father's store is gonna get shut down and she wants to talk to his supervisor, but she is at a sports game. So they go together because, hey, he just so happens to have extra tickets and takes a rando to the game with him and they try to convince her to waive the citations. We find out that there's some kind of water leaking problem or water, there's some kind of water problem. Wade's been trying to track it down, but he can't. So the supervisor, that's the purple cloud, Gail, she tells city inspector Wade and random citizen Ember that if they team up and find the source of the leak and solve it, then she'll waive the citations. Okay. So they're spending time together, they fall in love, but Ember is very conflicted because she wants to run away with Wade and work for his mom making glass, but also she doesn't want to let her dad down. In the end, the water issue does come back, they rescue each other, love conquers all, and the ending is actually really, really cute. So let's talk pros and cons, because this movie has a mix, but pros first. Obviously, the animation is gonna be the first thing that we need to mention. The fire looks really cool. The way they, they bend the fire people's bodies around, they squeeze into stuff, the translucency of the flames, really, really well well done. Water, which is notoriously hard to animate, is wonderfully pulled off here. Wade has this constant wave that is happening on the front of his head to form the curl of his hair. As usual, they did a great job making the city come to life. Every element has their own type of transportation. There's parts of the city with buildings tailored to them. Plenty of puns all over the place in the background. The animators had a really great time with this city, and it shows. I'm excited when the movie finally comes out. We're going to see a lot of YouTube videos pointing out all the little details they tucked into the world. Another big pro is that the romance gets really sweet in the second half. When Ember was a little girl, she wanted to go see this special tree that was in the middle of the city, but her and her dad were not allowed to go because racism. The building flooded at some point because the city has serious water problems, and now she's never going to get to see it. Wade convinces his supervisor to show up and blow an air bubble into the water that Ember can sit in. Don't think about this too hard. They travel down through the flooded building to see this tree in the middle. It's really beautiful. Really, really sweet moment. In the end, they're in love, and they, they move away together and she's got some really touching moments with her father. It's a very tidy ending to a cute love story and I really think you're gonna like that part. Okay, now the bad stuff. This movie is about race, but it was not well thought out at all. The release on the weekend of Juneteenth was no accident. They were going for the we're really all the same inside thing, except they showed you in the movie why the elements physically cannot mix. One of the reasons that Ember's dad doesn't like water people is because they physically hurt his pregnant wife by accidentally splashing on her early in the movie. If the fire people get wet, it puts them out and they have to quickly eat some kindling to grow back. If they get too close to water people, it boils them. If they touch plant people, it sets them on fire. The unintended message of this movie is that we really are different deep down and the racists are correct and the immigrants actually are dangerous. They we're not going for this in any way, but the racial allegory was handled so poorly, it 
kind of sends that message. One example, toward the end, Wade and Ember, you know, they're in love and Wade's like, we gotta touch each other. And she's like, we absolutely can't. And he's like, we just gotta try. And they hold hands and just some steam happens and nothing else happens. And that would be perfectly fine if we hadn't been shown earlier that opposite elements cause physical harm. But this is all waved away by the power of love and Wade just says that love changed their chemistry. <laughs> No, it's nitpicky. Fire is not a chemical. In the end, Wade and Ember get trapped inside the store and it gets too hot and he boils and evaporates, except he was just hugging her a minute ago. He's absorbed into the hearthstones and then drips out later and comes back to life, which makes it really weird that they mentioned multiple times that his dad is dead and died suddenly so he wasn't able to tell him how he really feels. How exactly do water people die if being boiled didn't do it? Stuff like this really pulls you out of the movie and just shows they didn't plan this well at all. At one point, Ember and Wade are fighting a flood and he's panicking because the flood waters are pulling him away. It's little stuff like that happening over and over that makes the plot very weak. The entire premise for them spending time together is that these two unqualified people are gonna track down a serious infrastructure problem for the city. Basically, they just wanted to do this love story with some race themes and everything else exists only to make that work, even if the details conflict. Why is there a ton of water piping in the fire ghetto? Don't know. Why won't the city fix the floodgates after an inspector finds damage? No idea. Why do most of the plot points happen at all? Just so these two can get together. My other big complaint is the pacing as usual with new Pixar. The first half of this movie is quite slow and the romance is extremely one-sided at first. Wade is basically instantly in love with Ember. She has a much more interesting growth in the romance being conflicted between him and her father and her family. He is like an 18 year old enlistee, engagement ring already in his pocket. He just needs to find someone to propose to. I really didn't feel anything between them for quite some time. And I think it's because they tried to force that romance really hard at first. Now, Later on, you really do start to feel the romance between them. It, it gets going. He makes this great speech at the end. Very sweet ending. But you're probably going to be a little bored with the story for the first half, maybe first two thirds of the movie. Luckily, the scenery is really great. All right, family review portion. My wife really loved this movie. She was actually crying at certain points, the, the really sweet romantic points. Uh, she gave it a seven out of 10. Didn't like how quick Wade was just in love with Ember right away but she did like the return to the classic romance for Disney. She loved the animation, loved the city overall. Really enjoyed the movie. Here are the kids' stories overall. Uh, the 15 year old gave it a six out of 10, which I was actually really uh, surprised about. Now, what you don't understand about my 15 year old is that she is your classic oldest daughter, people pleaser. So a six out of 10 for her is like a three for the rest of us. She was bored for the most part. She noted that she ate all of her popcorn, which she did not do at Spider-Verse because she was so wrapped up in that movie, she forgot to eat the popcorn. So she did want to note, she had plenty of time to remember that she was hungry. She did say she liked the city, the themes, especially the music, but she felt like the story was pretty underbaked and the romance was very rushed. 13 year old liked it overall, did admit that it took a while to get going, but she was like me. She went in with low expectations and they were greatly exceeded and she liked the ending a lot. All three boys, 11, nine and seven, pretty much said the same thing. They didn't like how quickly Wade was just in love, but they really enjoyed Ember's story of like being torn about her family business and wanting to go her own way. They thought that whole thing was really interesting. Three-year-old took zero bathroom breaks this time, although partly that's because I was sitting next to her and I don't share my drink like a certain soft woman likes to do. She and the seven-year-old were mostly interested. They did wrestle around a little bit toward the end. This has a much shorter runtime, but unlike Spider-Verse, nobody took their clothes off. So overall, I'd say they were pretty interested in this one. I don't like to do scores. I just like the three questions. Is this a theater or a rental? Do you regret spending money? Would you watch it again? This is definitely a rental. My whole family agrees on this one. Nothing is added by seeing this in theaters. And I would not call this movie bad, but you will not regret waiting to stream it. I'm not upset that I spent money to go see this one. I mean, my family did have a really good time, but I do think that Transformers or The Flash would have been a better use. Will we watch it again? I think so, especially when it comes on Disney+. Plus. This is a nice family movie, and I think your kids are gonna enjoy it, even if it doesn't make your short list of greatest movies of all time. It's gonna make for a nice way to spend some time on the couch with your family. It's good looking you're going to find some cool details in the background. So what do you guys think? Are you planning on going to see Elemental? Are you going to wait to rent this one? Have you already seen it? Let me know your thoughts. I love reading and responding. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.